Buckle up, America. Jerome Powell is going to need to lower rates in September. But what is that going to do to your cryptocurrency portfolio? And what is this going to do to the middle class? We're going to break that down in today's video in detail. We're going to talk about the job markets. We're going to look at the consumer credit index. We're going to talk about how lowering interest rates in September could be a positive impact for your crypto. But if you're not paying attention, you have to make this your priority. If you're in the middle class in America, you have to make financial literacy your priority. Every single dollar in the system is someone else's debt. So we're going to dive right into this. We're first going to start out uh, with a message from Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, I love his books, Cash Flow Quadrant, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, and this was posted by Good Morning Crypto, one of the greatest hosts, Abs. It uh, says, just in, Rich Dad, Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki predicts world's most world's worst market crash, crash is coming soon. Now, when I say that, that causes fear in people. But if you're watching this channel, you're probably invested in cryptocurrency or you've done like I've done and insured your wealth. I use insurance to protect my wealth. Okay. So I got in, my wealth protected on the insurance side and have a very volatile asset on the other side. And in the middle is this fiat currency, these markets and all this stuff. So I've strategically positioned myself based on where I think this is going. So let's read this, and I'm going to show you the facts, figures, numbers, logic, all the way down to the economic advisor for Biden, which should be concerning to you. So it says soft landing or crash landing. I hope I am wrong, yet I am prepared, so am I, for the biggest market crash in world history. Now that may be a hint why Warren Buffett is in $277 billion in cash and pulled most of it out of Apple. Why I'm preparing for the crash landing or it says question. Why am I preparing for a crash landing? A answer, because if I am right, a crash and possible depression will make myself and those that are prepared very, very rich. Amen. That's what we're preparing for. That's what we prepare you for on this channel. Most people are too lazy to prepare and are hoping the three stooges running America will save them. So that's exactly what my whole narrative and my whole plan is based on is this type of economy. I look at waves of energy. Billionaires use astrology. Millionaires use charts. Warren Buffett indicator, the stock market is extremely overvalued. He's moving into cash. Okay, there's something coming here. But Bitcoin and cryptocurrency play a completely different role in this. So we're going to watch this video really quickly around mortgage interest rates. And then we're going to go a little bit deeper into the job markets. U.S. mortgage rates are now at their lowest point in 15 months, and experts say they could continue to drop after the Federal Reserve is expected to slash the federal funds rate next month. The declining rate comes after the labor market's July job report that showed the unemployment rate is increasing. So what does this all mean for consumers? Well, Bank of America's chief executive officer, Brian Moynihan, was on Face the Nation where he talked about the current economic climate. Take a listen. But if you look within it, they're still going to restaurants and they're taking travel. But on the other hand, they're spending a little bit less. Uh, they're going to the food store the same number of times, but spending a little bit less, which means they're basically finding bargains and things like that. And you're seeing corporations cut price to respond to that. And mm -hmm. so, okay. So I'll show you why all this is happening. Okay. So that was July, but look at August. We're halfway through August. This should be very concerning to you guys. I've been preparing you guys for this since last year. I told you the job markets are going to go to a normal post-pandemic economy. The job markets are going to start to falter. Okay, That's going to cause a massive, massive problem in America in the middle class. The middle class has, needs to make $150,000 just to be middle class now. So July, the job market started to falter. And this is already halfway through August. We're seeing a huge decline in the job markets. Now, remember in July, 70,000 of those jobs that were brought into the market were governmental jobs. So now we're starting to see a normal post-pandemic job market economy. And you heard what he said, the guy from Bank of America, because look at this. Look at this, guys. Since 2020, the household debt has skyrocketed in America. So now the household debt is skyrocketing. The consumer credit index, credit cards hit $1.1 trillion. So now everybody's credit cards are getting maxed. We're hitting a tipping point. He just said the spending is going down. They're still going to the grocery store, but they're spending less. Okay. The work week went from 40 hours down to 32 hours. The job markets are starting to falter. Remember, financial literacy. All money in the system is debt. Write that down. So if all money in the system is debt, and if people aren't using debt, there's no income in America. 
So the only thing they can do is make debt cheaper and turn the printing machine on to monetize more debt. That's all they can do. So if they turn the printing machine on, it devalues the dollar. If they lower the interest rates, it makes the dollar less valuable, which in turn brings our Bitcoin strategy to the forefront. This is not just happening in America, guys. Job markets, uncertainty causes headaches for Bank of England, rate setters. They're all going through this right now, okay? So I watched this press, uh, the press um, White House briefing yesterday on 814. This is the economic advisor for Biden. So we're going to watch his little briefing on the economy. And I want you to think, is this how you feel it's going? And then we're going to watch what he believes or what he knows about bonds. Uh, with you as well, uh, Kareen, of course. Uh, today's CPI report is a story of twos. First, we have monthly inflation for July that came in right at expectations at 0.2% for both headline and core. And by the way, if you want to get nerdy. Oh, oh, shoot. Of course, they don't want us to go. Hold on. Let me fix this real quick. Bear with me. I don't edit my videos, guys. Raw and authentic here. Here we go. Let's jump right back. Okay. Boom. Here we go. At 0.2% for both headline and core. Oh, my and by the way, if you want to get nerdy with me, which I'm sure you do. Uh, those were soft, we call those soft point twos, meaning uh, 0.15 and 0.17 respectively. So they and, and the point that he said, if you want to get nerdy with them, we're going to get nerdy with them about bonds, okay, in just a moment. He's going to teach us about bonds in just a moment. They round up to two, uh, but that's uh, sometimes we call that a soft point two. Second, uh, we have, uh, for uh, the first time in over three years, a two handle as we call it, on yearly inflation, which is up 2.9% over the past year. We haven't seen a rate that low since March of 2021, and that's slightly below what was expected. And third, I think there are two important messages from today's CPI report. First, we're moving in the right direction on inflation and doing so with some momentum. I say that because when we look at some of the more near-term indicators of inflation's growth rate, we see a six-month annualized rate of 2.5% and a three-month annualized rate of 0.4%. So those more near-term rates give a us a better sense of where inflation is headed. The second message from today's report is that while the trend is our friend, our work is far from done. Our cost-cutting agenda on behalf of American households is as urgent and important as ever. We will continue to aggressively push to lower the cost of prescription drugs and health coverage. Okay, they go into their whole shimo shit, whatever. They're going to lower rates in September, guys, which, again, I'm going to break down the Bitcoin narrative in just a moment. But this is the people, that's the economic advisor. But let's remind you what he knows about bonds. Okay, this is the guy that's advising Biden. <sighs> The U.S. government can't go bankrupt because we can print our own money. So key. We can't go bankrupt because we print our own money. It obviously begs the question, why exactly are we borrowing in a currency that we print ourselves? I'm waiting for someone to stand up and say, why do we borrow our own currency in the first place? Like you said, they print the dollar. So why, why does the government even borrow? Well, um... The, uh, so the, I mean, again, some of this stuff gets some of the language that the MM, some of the language and concepts are just confusing. I mean, the government definitely prints money and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money. Okay. And then it lends that money by, uh, Got it. by selling bonds. Got it. Uh, is that what they do? <laughs> they, they, um, yes, that's what they do. They, yeah, they, they, um, they, sell bonds yeah. yeah they sell bonds yeah right because they sell bonds and people buy the bonds and lend them the money yeah yeah so a lot of times a lot of times at least to my year with, with mmt the the language and the concepts can be kind of unnecessarily confusing but there is no question that the government prints money and then it uses that money to um uh uh, uh so um yeah, I, I guess I'm just I don't I can't really talk I, I don't I don't get it I don't know what they're talking about like because it's like the government clearly prints money it does it all the time and it clearly borrows otherwise we wouldn't be having this debt and deficit conversation so I don't think there's anything confusing there uh, except you the only thing that's confusing is you <laughs> yes you're right we print money we we're the only country that can print our way out of our problems. 
we can print money since the federal reserve was created in 1913 let me give him his lesson in 1913 since the federal reserve was created the dollars collapsed 97 to 99 percent since 1971 we detached from the gold standard and all we got to do is turn on the printing machine when we're in trouble that's all we have to do and all we have to do is monetize debt and that's why we ended up in the situation that we're in right now that's why we are all struggling to pay groceries that's why we're all struggling to pay our bills in america because they printed so much gosh damn money from 2020 to 2022 that they devalued the dollar inflation went through the roof and how do they fix inflation by you losing your job that's how they fix inflation that's how they fix inflation that's why it makes takes you $150,000 a year to be middle class. That's why I encourage everybody to take sovereignty of the wealth. I just tell people to join my team. Like, guys, we have to fix this. So the Bitcoin narrative. Let me read these notes from Gonzo from our team. He's absolutely amazing. So I, uh, he, he helped me with some corrections on some uh, things around BTC. 94% of the BTC supply has been mined. 94%, listen to me, this Bitcoin. Only 6% left. It will be mined over the next 116 years, about 20 million mined, 1 million left. There's only 6% of the Bitcoin supply left. People aren't selling it. It's a risk on, risk off asset. 6% of the supply is left. If they do what they say they're going to do, Say if Trump comes into presidency, Cynthia Loomis gets her, her way and they move it under the treasury and they don't sell it and they start buying, they said they're gonna buy 500 per day. There's only 450 mined per day, guys. Do you realize what the value of BTC will be and your alternative coins as well? Because BTC drives the whole market. And do you realize that the baby boomers, how much wealth is with the baby boomers? And we have to rethink retirement and all the wealth is transferring the baby boomers down and it's going to transfer into blockchain technology, on-demand liquidity, infrastructure, the new financial system. Trillions and trillions of dollars are going to flood into these markets. But you got all these crypto people and all these people in crypto like, what about the bull run? What if we don't go? Guys, get out of the short five-year, 10-year, 20-year horizon, and your life could radically transform. I don't care if there's a bull run. I care if it goes up and I sell. And I care if it goes down and I buy. And my Bitcoin, I'm not touching a dime of my Bitcoin. I'm dying with that transferring in my Rockefeller trust to the next generation. And that will go from generation to generation to generation. Bitcoin was created on purpose, guys. I will say that boldly. Bitcoin was created on purpose because it is the only thing that can fix this effed up monetary system. Because if they put it under the treasury, the balance sheet shrinks like crazy. Think about that, guys. Bitcoin was created in 2009 at the exact time Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. We need to wake up and look at some logical circuit here. 2012, the Mayan calendar ended. Everybody thought the world was going to end, but they did change some shit. FOMC was created. Bank bail-in committee was created. Rosie was told to reduce coin and cash usage. Obama you turned the printing machine on full blast, and she said you need a shock to the system, Rosie Reels, to change consumer behaviors. Boom! We have a shock to the system in 2020. It changed all our consumer behaviors. We're now on Zoom calls all day. All these AI technology is coming. AI cannot operate without cryptocurrency, guys. Wake up. Wake up to this reality. I still have people that have been around me for a very long time saying, but JB, do you really, do you think that cryptocurrency, do you think Bitcoin is real? I'm like, are you serious? Don't listen to me. BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world, said it's a flight to quality. You say Warren Buffett's not involved in Bitcoin. He hates Bitcoin. It's rat poisoning. But he owns a huge portion of Nubank, which is a cryptocurrency bank. Guys, don't let them play you, man. JP Morgan says that, oh, Bitcoin's a fraud, but they got JPM coin, which is a blockchain technology, on-demand liquidity. R3, Wells Fargo, Bank of America's with Ripple. It's your new financial system. It is no longer tinfoil hat. It is no longer tinfoil hat, guys. It is here. When they tell you to look this way, the whole narrative changes this way. 
So I hope this information reaches you well. We have to understand the macro and microeconomics. These are the people running our country, guys. They're not going to teach you this stuff in school. They're not. They're not going to teach you this stuff in school. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. If you need any support at all, I get hundreds of messages a day on all my social media platforms. I ensure my wealth. That's what I do personally. I have a team that can help you with wealth retirement strategies. Okay. It's a absolutely free consultation. It's down in the description of my video down below. You click it. You can meet with my team for free. You click the bio, you click on there, and they can walk you through wealth retirement strategies. Uh, remember, it's a free consultation. Be careful of scammers. I'll never reach out to you about your crypto. I do not invest people's crypto money. Um, those are all scammers, okay? There's tons of scam profiles out there, so be very careful. It's a free consultation with my team, all 50 states and in Canada. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. As we always say, warriors, rise. Get your shit together. Let's go.